Born on August 1st, 1920 in Roanoke, Virginia, Henrietta Lacks' story begins in a world far removed from the sterile, cutting-edge laboratories that would later play a pivotal role in her life. Henrietta faced numerous challenges in her early life, including poverty and limited access to education and health care. But amidst these hardships, she would unknowingly become a beacon of hope for medical science. Welcome back to Black Discoveries. The Early Life of Henrietta Lacks Henrietta Lacks was born as Loretta Pleasant on August 1st, 1920 in Roanoke, Virginia. Her life began in a world shaped by racial segregation and economic hardship. She was born into a family that faced challenging and turbulent upbringing. Her mother, Eliza Pleasant, passed away in 1924 when Henrietta was just four years old, leaving her father, Johnny Pleasant, with the daunting task of raising their ten children. To provide for his family, Johnny moved them to Clover, Virginia, where they were divided among relatives. In this close-knit community, Henrietta found herself living with her maternal grandfather, Thomas Tommy Henry Lax, in a two-story log cabin. This cabin had once served served as slave quarters on a plantation owned by Henrietta's white great-grandfather and great-uncle. She shared this space with her nine-year-old first cousin, David Day Lax, who would later become her husband. From an early age, like many others in her family, Henrietta contributed to the family income by working as a tobacco farmer. Her days were filled with caring for animals, tending to the garden, and toiling in the tobacco fields. Education was limited, and she attended the designated black school, located two miles away from the cabin, only until the sixth grade. She was forced to drop out to help support her family. In 1935, at the age of 14, Henrietta gave birth to a son, Lawrence Lax. Four years later, her daughter, Elsie Lax, was born in 1939. Both of these children were fathered by Daylax. Elsie, in particular, faced significant health challenges, having epilepsy and cerebral palsy, which made her different, or in the words of the family, deaf and dumb. These early years in Virginia marked the formative period of Henrietta's life, laying the foundation for her extraordinary journey that would eventually intersect with the world of medicine and science. From the humble beginnings in rural Virginia, Henrietta's life would take a remarkable turn when she moved to Baltimore, Maryland, with her husband, David Daylax. It was in Baltimore that she would encounter a healthcare system that would forever change the course of medical history. The Immortal Healer Cells in 1951, Henrietta Lacks was diagnosed with cervical cancer and received treatment at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. During her treatment, a small sample of her cancerous tissue was taken for analysis. This seemingly routine procedure would become the genesis of a medical revolution. Those minuscule cells would soon unveil their extraordinary ability to multiply and thrive. The HeLa cells, as they came to be known, were the first human cells ever successfully cultivated and replicated in a laboratory setting. Henrietta Lacks' journey from a small tobacco farm in Virginia to the medical history books began in 1951 when she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. At the time, Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland was the only nearby hospital that treated black patients and it was there that she sought medical attention. Her primary care doctor, Dr. William C. Wade, referred her to the hospital for further examination due to a knot she felt in her womb. At Johns Hopkins, Dr. Howard W. Jones conducted a biopsy of the mass on Henrietta's cervix. The diagnosis was a malignant epidermoid carcinoma of the cervix. It was, in fact, a misdiagnosis. Later, in 1970, physicians would discover that she had an adenocarcinoma. Although the misdiagnosis was later revealed, the treatment would not have differed. During her treatments, Two samples were taken from Henrietta's cervix without her consent or knowledge, one from healthy tissue and the other from the cancerous area. These samples would become the origin of the HeLa Immortal Cell line, a turning point in the history of medical research. Henrietta Lacks' life was inextricably linked with the scientific discovery of her immortal cells, HeLa. The journey of these cells, now replicated in laboratories worldwide, led to a medical revolution that we'll delve deeper into shortly. Now, let's explore how Henrietta's legacy impacted her family, medical ethics, and the broader world of science and medicine.
The family of Henrietta lacks and consent issues. Henrietta Lacks' remarkable story isn't just about science, but also about the family left behind. While her cells became an invaluable resource for medical research, her family's journey was marked by challenges and surprises. The use of HeLa cells sparked ethical questions about consent, privacy, and the rights of Henrietta's descendants. It wasn't until the 1970s that Henrietta's family learned about the HeLa cell line and the scientific legacy she had unwittingly left behind. Henrietta Lacks' story took an unexpected turn when the HeLa cell line was established without her consent or the knowledge of her family. In the early 1970s, researchers and scientists began to realize the significance of these unique cells. They were not aware that the source of these cells was Henrietta Lacks. It wasn't until 1975, nearly two decades after Henrietta's passing, that her family learned about the HeLa cell line's existence. This revelation brought a mix of emotions, surprise, shock, and inevitably questions. What did it mean that part of Henrietta lived on in laboratories and research world Worldwide. Henrietta's family, a part of her legacy, was left grappling with a newfound connection to science that they never knew existed. But the story didn't end there. The use of HeLa cells sparked an ethical debate about consent and privacy, leading to broader discussions about patient rights in medical research. While the medical community thrived on the HeLa cells, the question of whether Henrietta or her family should have been consulted or compensated for their use became a matter of concern. It underscored the broad issues of informed consent and privacy in the world of medical research. Henrietta Lacks family's discovery of the HeLa cell line marked a pivotal moment in the evolving narrative of science, ethics and patient rights. This journey of discovery and contemplation continued to unfold in intriguing ways. Next, we'll delve into the remarkable scientific impact of the HeLa cells, the groundbreaking discoveries they facilitated, and the ongoing legacy of Henrietta Lacks in the world of medicine and research. The scientific impact of HeLa cells. The HeLa cell line was a game changer in medical research. Its unique ability to multiply and thrive in laboratory conditions led to countless breakthroughs in science. From the development of the polio vaccine to cancer research and gene mapping, HeLa cells played a pivotal role in various areas of medicine. These remarkable cells, first observed by Dr. George Otto Gay, opened the door to unprecedented possibilities in biomedical research. The HeLa cell line was nothing short of a game-changer in the world of medical research. Dr. George Otto Gay, the first researcher to work with Henrietta Lacks' cancerous cells, observed something exceptional about them. These cells multiplied at an extraordinarily high rate and could be kept alive for extended periods, enabling in-depth research that had been impossible before. Prior to HeLa cells, most cultured cells survived for only a few days, which was insufficient for conducting various experiments. HeLa cells' unique ability to multiply without dying earned them the label of immortal cells. After Henrietta's passing, Dr. Gay's lab assistant, Mary Kubicek, continued to collect HeLa samples from Henrietta's body during the autopsy at Johns Hopkins. Using the roller tube technique, these cells were cultured, isolated, and repeatedly divided, ensuring that one single cell could be used for various experiments, opening doors to a range of research possibilities. These extraordinary cells played a pivotal role in various fields of medicine. In 1954, Dr. Jonas Salk used HeLa cells in his research to develop the polio vaccine, a groundbreaking achievement in the world of virology. To test the vaccine, HeLa cells were mass-produced in the first ever cell production factory. Additionally, Dr. Chester M. Southam, a prominent virologist, injected HeLa cells into cancer patients, prison inmates, and healthy individuals to observe whether cancer could be transmitted and if an acquired immune response could provide immunity to cancer. The applications of HeLa cells expanded exponentially. They were used in research related to cancer, AIDS, radiation and toxic substances, gene mapping, and various scientific endeavors. Their significance reached such heights that by 1955, HeLa cells were the first human cells successfully cloned. The story of HeLa was also intertwined with unexpected applications such as testing human sensitivity to everyday products like tape, glue, and cosmetics. The remarkable story of HeLa cells and their role in groundbreaking scientific discoveries shines a light on Henrietta Lacks' enduring legacy. But this journey was just beginning. 
It raises questions about consent, ethics, and the rights of Henrietta's family that continue to be a source of debate and discussion. Next, we'll explore the consent issues and privacy concerns surrounding healer cells, as well as the ongoing legacy of Henrietta Lacks in the world of medicine and research. Constant issues and privacy concerns. The use of HeLa cells raised serious ethical questions. Henrietta and her family had never given their consent for the use of these cells in medical research. In the 1980s, family medical records were published without their consent, sparking a debate about the rights of individuals and their discarded tissues. In 1990, the Supreme Court of California ruled that a person's discarded tissue and cells could be commercialized. The remarkable scientific breakthroughs facilitated by HeLa cells came with a significant ethical conundrum. Henrietta Lacks and her family had never provided consent for the use of these cells in medical research. During the 1980s, the family faced another breach of privacy when their medical records were published without their consent. These events ignited a significant debate about the rights of individuals and what happens to their discarded tissues. One of the key legal milestones in this ethical debate occurred in 1990 when the Supreme Court of California ruled in the case of Moore versus Regents of the University of California. The court concluded that an individual's discarded tissue and cells are not their property and could be commercialized. This decision set a legal precedent, but it also sparked intense discussions about the ethical responsibilities of the medical and scientific communities. In 2013, researchers published the DNA sequence of a strain of HeLa cells without the knowledge of Henrietta's family. The Lacks family raised concerns about the privacy of genetic information accessible to the public, particularly concerning what could be discovered about Henrietta's descendants. It wasn't until August 2013 that an agreement was reached between the Lacks family and the National Institutes of Health, NIH, that granted the family some control over access to the cell's DNA sequence found in various studies. This was a crucial step in recognizing the family's rights and acknowledging their connection to Henrietta's legacy. Henrietta Lacks' story is a testament to the complex intersection of science, ethics, and patient rights. Her family's efforts to regain control of their legacy and protect their privacy continue to shape the ongoing narrative surrounding the HeLa cells. But the story of Henrietta Lacks doesn't end with her passing, the impact of HeLa cells, or the legal debates that followed. Her enduring legacy resonates in various ways, including recognition and honors for her contributions to science, medicine, and society. In the next section, we'll explore the recognition and tributes that have been bestowed upon Henrietta Lacks, honoring her invaluable role in the world of research. Recognition and Tributes Henrietta Lacks' contributions to science and medicine have not gone unnoticed. Her remarkable story has been recognized and celebrated in various ways. From annual conferences to posthumous awards, organizations and institutions have paid tribute to Henrietta's invaluable role in medical research. Tributes include statues, honors from educational institutions, and even a minor planet named in her memory. Henrietta Lacks' contributions to science and medicine have not gone unnoticed. Her remarkable journey and the impact of HeLa cells continue to receive recognition in various forms. As we conclude our journey into the life and legacy of Henrietta Lacks, we're left with a profound sense of awe and gratitude for this remarkable woman. Henrietta Lacks, whose cells gave birth to countless medical breakthroughs, is a testament to the unforeseen impact one individual can have on the world of science. Her story is a reminder of the ethical dilemmas surrounding patient consent and the commercialization of human biological materials. It challenges us to consider the intersection of progress and ethics, a debate that continues to evolve. Through Henrietta's legacy, her immortal healer cells, we find inspiration in the boundless potential of human discovery and the power of one woman's contribution to science. As we reflect on her life and her enduring gift to humanity, may we continue to explore the frontiers of medicine, but always with the ethical considerations that Henrietta's story compels us to address. In honoring her memory, we honor the countless lives she continues to touch. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. We'll see you in the next video.